Hey everybody, this is gonna be a video for the beginners that always ask me what is the bare minimum equipment that I would need to start flat bedding in hot shot. This is gonna break that down. I'm gonna give you pieces of equipment, generalizations as of why you would need that. So here's that video guys. We're gonna get into what you're gonna need just to start, you're gonna advance and grow and, and, and find other things that you might need. It'll be specific to what you start hauling on a regular basis, but to get started and be available to haul almost anything, let's break this down. All right, so first and foremost, you're gonna need tarps. I recommend two tarps, especially for a 40 foot, guys. Uh, you're gonna want two tarps. My preference of tarp is two 24 foot by 20 foot machinery tarps that have D-rings all the way around on all four sides. You're going to want that because you can have that as two six foot drop tarps that are, four, that are 24 foot long that will cover an entire deck. And you'll also be able to flip those around sideways to have two eight foot drop tarps that are 40 foot in length total that'll be able to cover the entire deck on an eight foot tall drop tarp load. Now I've had some people tell me that this is illegal. It's actually not. You can use one inch straps to secure stuff like this. And this strap is almost, the tag is almost gone on this. Has a working load limit of 500 pounds. I don't think we'll be able to see that. This strap does have a working load limit of 500 pounds perfectly legal to strap something like that down moving on all right first and foremost before we get too far into this one of the things i suggest when you're picking out a trailer is that you end up having a winch track on your trailer for a four inch winch it'll be a collective as these they're um they're just so much better than using two inch straps all the time two inch straps are going to work but a four inch strap has a wider footprint You'll be able to tighten that a little bit easier, especially with edge protectors and all that, before you actually start cutting into the load, uh, which these will tend to do if you start tightening them to the point to where you're gonna need it for securement. So I highly recommend that. Um, four inch ratchet straps are very expensive. Uh, these come in typically six foot sections. You can see where they're welded together there. And a six foot section is usually about 50 bucks. This will take about, you know, five sections. So I would highly recommend getting this um, buy it yourself. If you, if you already have a trailer, don't let it be a deal breaker. Buy this yourself, have somebody weld it on. And if you don't know a welder, this is a really good time to get to know one because you're going to need one in the future if you're running this stuff. So let's jump into equipment. First, we've got binders. Now I've used snap binders. I've used these ratchet binders. I have used the static binders to where these don't flip down. I highly recommend the, these peerless binders. They're really easy to use. Uh, they do have a neutral position on here as well to where you can just free spin this, uh, which is really helpful in tightening up. And uh, if you're tarping anything that's actually underneath a chain load, uh, it's really nice to have this, to be able to be kicked out of the way. Now with a normal binder to where this is permanently static, you're gonna have to find a way to flip this down and keep it that way but depending on if the down position you're able to put it into is against the ratchet when it's locked or tight uh, this actually could start getting tight enough to where you won't even be able to get your hand under there to start loosening it up uh, without a whole bunch of work so that i would highly recommend uh it's not a must but they are very very nice uh, not the cheapest though these are about some of the most expensive you can have as far as what type to get I would get one that fits 5 16th to 3 8 and make sure everything you do in transport is grade 70. Everything. Your life and others depend on that right there. Now to come off on that just a tiny bit, uh, this, is, this is my winch bar right here that I used to tighten my straps. If you do have snap binders, I'll show a picture of this too. Uh, if you do have snap binders, you're going to want the one with the block on the end and that's to actually leverage your snap binders down and it actually helps to to knock them up to to unsnap them without having your your arm in the way there all right so let's move on to chains uh for hot shot i actually recommend 516 chain it's lighter it's cheaper uh it's still 
like I said, go with grade 70. The working load limit on this is enough to be able to handle nearly anything you're gonna do with flatbed hotshot, even if you're only doing uh, two chains on a unit. And of course, you know, if anything's over 10,000, you're required four chains anyway. But something that small to where if you're talking about like, you know, 10 to 15 to 16,000 pounds, four or five sixteenths binders are gonna cover that. I mean, the, the total of four five sixteenths is going to be enough to cover that load and the aggregate that goes with it, which is the working load limit cut in half. Five sixteenths is what I recommend. You can get five, three eighths if you want to. That's perfectly fine. It's a little bit overkill for the hotshot world. Um, unless you're consistently hauling, you know, 16,000 pound pieces of equipment or 18 or even 20, you know, then yeah, you might want to step up. But if that's, if that's the case, chains are pretty much going to be your, your bread and butter anyway. So as, as little as you'll use these, and for the amount of weight you'll be hauling with these, 5 sixteenths is perfectly fine for hot shot. Just please get grade 70 for transport. For four inch straps, if you do have a winch system, you're gonna make sure you get a flat hook that'll go around a rub rail, or you can use wire hook. Um, you can use the chain style if you want to. That's perfectly up to you. Most people do use the flat hooks though. And just make sure that whatever you buy has a working load limit of 5,500 pounds or more. But most of the most of your four inch straps are going to be 5,500 pounds working load limit. Next, you're going to want a winch bar. It doesn't matter if it's painted the the chrome silver ones. It doesn't matter. You're just going to want a winch bar. That's how you're going to tighten your straps in the winch. Now, if you're just strictly using racket ratchets, you can pretty much knock out the winch bar. You won't need it, but I would recommend a winch track and a winch bar. So bungees, you're going to need a ton of bungees if you're going to tarp anything. And one thing that is surprisingly expensive is bungee cords. The ones that I've found that work best for this are the 21 inch bungees. You can get separate lengths, but th this seems to be like the perfect length. They're not too long. They're not too short. They got a great stretch. And I mean, if you do get something to where you need a shorter bungee cord, you can literally just wrap this around a couple of times on the rub rail and pull it back up. So 21 inch, there's two types you can buy, which is EPDM and natural rubber. Uh, the difference between those two is, I guess like if, I mean, if you lived in Phoenix or Nevada or something like your Southern Nevada to where it's hot almost all the time and it gets really hot in the summer, uh, I would go with EPDM. It's, uh, it's more resistant to high temp, but natural rubber is pretty much the way to go if you're you know somewhere where it gets cold a lot or you're just kind of in a moderate zone. Um, and two styles you can buy, and I left this on here just to show this, is uh, you can get the crimped S-hooks or you can get the loose S-hooks. Uh, the loose S-hooks, in, in my opinion, aren't worth it for two reasons. Number one, while in transport where these things are shaking around uh, loose when you're not using them, but when they're just shaking around inside of a box or a bucket, whatever you keep them in, uh, these S-hooks tend to fall out. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll slide around and pop out of there. It's, just not something you want to deal with. Uh, usually on these, whenever I get these, I, I crimp them anyway with just a pair of channel locks. Uh, but I would get the crimp. Another thing about the, the open S hooks that I don't like is that whenever you have these secured, uh, you know, uh, against your tarp with a hook out, this part right here typically tends to, if, you're, if your tarp's bellowing or this is bouncing around at some point, uh, it's going to dig into your tarp and it's going to start causing pinholes so moving on to another thing is edge protectors uh plastic edge protectors are very important uh, there there are several different sizes shapes uh different functionalities you can get with these but they, these tend to be pretty standard uh just your your typical uh four inch strap will fit right in there two inch strap will fit in there as well uh, just a general plastic edge protector as you start to pick up other things, you'll sometimes get cardboard edge protectors from carriers or from uh, shippers. Uh, keep these. Keep these all. With, I, I ended up using cardboard edge protectors more than I did the plastics because these are disposable. Um, they're reusable even if they get wet. Like I think these have even been wet a couple of times, but they're thick enough to where you can keep reusing them. And the great thing about these is that they, they're less harsh on painted surfaces like uh you know power boxes and uh you know painted painted metal and just anything with kind of a round edge that isn't just extremely sharp because these you know they, they are a little rough inside uh, especially as you start hauling things and it starts marring these up and i mean you're, you're putting some pressure down yeah you can go with cardboard you can go with plastic uh, you can get different sizes they make uh some specific to brick uh, which if you ever haul brick you'll find out why <laughs> but 
Anyway, you're going to want some edge protectors. And for the 4-inch straps, if you do have winches, I would recommend no less than 10. Uh, carrying a couple spares at all time is going to be a good deal because you can always get a better deal on straps uh, online than you can at a truck stop. Inside a truck stop, a, a typical strap is going to cost you about 30 bucks, sometimes even more than 35. So always get a couple of extra for four inch straps. I would highly recommend at least 10 uh, for a 40 foot trailer. This is this will this will all be generalized for a 40 foot trailer, but uh, kind of just go by, you know, every every four feet at least. But you're going to want more than that. But you know at the very least every four feet uh, with with these it like i said it kind of depends on what you're transporting how often you're transporting it if you do end up getting some chains don't run with any less than four because that's enough to secure one tracked vehicle you know like a skid steer or anything like that you're going to want at least four you know some tractors uh it'd be ideal to roll with eight or if you're carrying triple you know uh triple skid steers if you're able to do that or little mini excavators and all that you know you, you'd want to go with 12 but that it, as far as starting out i would have at least four of these same amount of binders to match uh i would roll with six to eight though if it were me so with bungee cords how many do you need for a 40 foot trailer and two tarps on those depending on how many how much footage you're using uh, you're you're never going to have enough bungee cords, it doesn't seem like. So, I mean, I would start off with at least 100. That would be like 250 pack. You're going to find out that you'll use these for more than just tarps. And th these will pop off. You'll lose them. You'll drop one. Uh, you know, they'll, it's, it's, you, these aren't permanent, so they will need to replace. So I would always have an extra pack. But, yeah, I would, I would buy. I would start with at least 100 of these. Uh, your 2-inch straps and your ratchets. For a 2-inch strap, I would use... Uh, the flat hook, these are going to, well, and for your typical two inch strap is going to be all threes, three, 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 3,333 pounds working load limit. So there's your two inch strap. If you are going exclusively two inch straps, I would start off with 16, 18, 20 of these because these are going to break. These like to find places that rub. They fray real easy getting on in the ratchets and all that. Um, I would start off with more of the, but if you are going to use four inches or if you are going to use four inch straps, I would still buy some two inch ratchet straps, have four or six or so, uh, because these are perfect for, uh, belly wrapping. These are perfect for, if you've got a load that wants to be high sided and you're strapping it all on one side, which you typically generally want to do, uh, you could use middle straps or center divided straps to actually start pulling the load the other way to stabilize it. If you have something tall that's really light and it likes to lean, uh, you could kind of stabilize that with some two inches. Uh, two inch straps are just handy. They're really handy. Uh, you can use uh, two different styles. There's actually three. There's another chain style, but you can use what generally the flat hook style of, of ratchet on this, or you could use a wire hook. Um, with the wire hook though, on my rub rail, it won't fit inside there you have to you, you would have to hook it from the outside just like that which i don't like doing i and especially facing the bottom because if anything comes loose it's off you know if it, if this drops just a tiny bit you usually want to come in and over uh your 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 rub rail if you can't secure directly underneath the trailer now on this on the on the pj trailer there is no bar under here to actually hook on your your flat hook or a wire hook so if you're using the rub rail uh, on this trailer anyway, on the PJ's, uh, wire hook won't fit through it, so you want to go flat hook. And last but not least, I've had wheeled trailers. Um, I've used these on vehicles that I've popped up here, uh, lasso straps. Really, I didn't have these for a while, and they changed the game once I got them, especially for hauling like equipment trailers and stuff, uh, and even vehicles. They're just super easy. You just, you, uh, you, you loop this over the tire, you come opposite of your of the, the little old circle ring here, secure it to the side, and that goes over the tire at 10 and 2, and uh, locks everything down real nice. Those are way better than trying to, you know, like chain a new car or making makeshift lassos out of two-inch straps. Uh, this is just way more secure, and they're super easy to deal with. And uh, you, don't, you don't have to sit there and check it and worry about it as much, and, and the abrasiveness isn't going off if you're trying to cross like a two-inch strap to make a lasso out of a regular two inch strap I and mean, you can't do that but 
for for the price of these, these these aren't that bad at all. It's they're well worth it. Another thing I would recommend too is uh, some four by four dunnage, some eight foot four by. If you have a long bed pickup truck, it will actually fit right in the back. But if you don't have a long bed or it's a flat bed, you know, or a cabin chassis style, um, you could always just tie it onto the trailer. So that's it, guys. Hopefully that's everything you would need to know. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any other ideas or items or felt like I'm, I left something out, let me know also. So that's it. Hopefully this helped out. I'll have links to all of this in the description below uh, to where you can actually find everything I talked about, plus a few extra things so that you can find everything that I've talked about in this video, plus a few extra things that you might not think that you might need later down the road or you might run into that you would need as you're going along with this. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.